Okay, here we have it. The newest 2011 NIV. Let's flip this book over. Now let me zoom in here. Look at right there. Made in China. Go here to the title page. Focus for me. Printed in China. Isn't that incredible? You take your new version and you get it printed by communists. People that are anti-Christian. And by the way, before I continue, I want to show you about the quality of this piece of junk. You aren't going to believe this. Alright, let's look at the quality of this fine communist Chinese made version. As you're flipping through it, you'll notice that the pages aren't even cut right. You have to constantly be pulling the edges of the pages apart. It's not even cut correctly. I mean, I never, all my books that I've ever had, I never got one like this. You have to constantly be pulling the, the, the pages apart. I mean, it's, it's just, it's garbage. I mean, you know, you go through the Old Testament. I want to be doing reviews of this thing, so I haven't gone through the whole thing yet. But, I mean, it, it's just, it's bad. And then look, at, look in here at the uh, inside of the thing. Look at that. Yeah, you know, it's all wrinkled here. They didn't they didn't get it glued down correctly and and you know, just I mean junk. You could probably yeah, look at that. Come on, focus. I mean, look at this. You just pull it like that and it just rips. Just incredible. Just the the junk. You know, and this is passed off as a as a Bible. I paid over twenty dollars for this stupid thing too. The new NIV Thin line Bible. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's junk. It's garbage. I mean, look at that. I mean, I'm barely even pulling on that thing and it's just ripping. Let me just show you here, real quick, a good comparison. Look at this. Look at that. I'm pulling hard on that thing. Did it rip? No. What do we have here? We have a local church Bible publisher's King James Bible. And this thing here, I mean, look at that. Bend it. This goes right back. And guess how much I paid for this? About $45. So in other words, about $20 more expensive than this Chinese made in communist China piece of junk. You know? And this thing here is just beautiful. I mean, it, it's, man, it's just a beautiful Bible. <clears throat> and it's made in America too, by the way, I might add. So which one would you rather have? communist Chinese made garbage or handmade Bible made in America by Christians, local church Bible publishers. And what's the difference in cost? About $20. <laughs> Gee, I man, I got to think about that one. Boy, I, that's going to be a tough decision. Communist made Chinese garbage or handmade King James Bible. Man, that's a tough decision, isn't it? But uh, I just want to make a couple things here about um, this the whole thing of communist China. Okay, a lot of people are aware of the fact that there are forced labor camps in China, but some of you might not know to the full extent of which this thing goes. You might not know that Christians have been persecuted in China now for many, many, many years. Um, some say back to 1949 is when the communists basically took over and they you know, have been running China ever since. And it's interesting because there's all this talk about oppression in Libya and all oh, we got to go over there and Afghanistan and Iraq and all these places like that. What about China? What about the Christians being persecuted over there, being used as slave labor? You say, well, Brian, I don't know if I believe that. You know, that might be some propaganda stuff. Well, I'm going to show you two pieces of evidence here on that subject. First, we have here the Taipei Times, I think is how you say that. It says here, China detains dozens of Christian worshipers. Look at the date there. Monday, April the 11th of 2011. That's when this happened. I mean, that's a couple weeks ago. 
Now we're going to jump down there to the um, one paragraph there. It says, Beijing police arrested dozens of Christian worshipers yesterday from a house church, one not formally recognized by the government. Hmm, isn't that interesting? When they tried to pray outdoors, a right, rights group said, they sang hymns and said prayers as police loaded them onto waiting buses in Beijing's western Haidian, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, district. The U.S.-based Christian rights group China Aid said in a statement citing witnesses. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole article, but you go down through there, and uh, pretty interesting here it says, look at this. China only allows religious worship in state-approved churches, kind of like 501c3. Organizers of underground churches are routinely sent to labor camps without trial. And this is the country that you would approach to print your Bible? A country that imprisons Christians without trial and puts them in forced labor camps? Now I want to show you a little video here, a little video segment showing somebody actually snuck out some cell phone video of the uh, labor camps over there in China. And it's very hard to find video of these things. I mean, it is totally covered up. But there are estimates of, of tens of thousands of, of these labor or Chinese you know, people being in these labor camps up to millions of them. And that's where you're getting a lot of this made in China stuff. So I want to show you here a video real quickly of one of these forced labor camps, what it looks like inside of one. Take a look at this. Today we begin a special series on the shocking conditions within China's re-education through labor camps. Now with cell phone camera footage that has just been smuggled out of China, the international community is being given a rare glimpse of life within these camps. This is Masanjia Labor Camp, also referred to as the Ideology Education School of Liaoning Province. Practitioners of the Falun Gong spiritual practice as well as house Christians are held here, often without trial or formal sentencing. Forced labor is one of the tactics used here to reform what the Communist Party considers improper political or spiritual beliefs. Prisoners at Masanjia often work from 5 a.m. to midnight. Sometimes they're forced to work through the night without sleep. If they are given a chance to rest during the day, it's on the factory floor. Mealtime means a few scraps of cornbread and maybe some kanji or a tiny portion of vegetables. Then it's back to work. In this footage, eight Chinese prisoners can be seen straightening electrical components called diodes. Not shown here is some of the other work that they're forced to do, including manufacturing Halloween decorations like skulls and plastic tombstones for export to the United States. Some prisoners have to handle toxic substances without protective gear, causing itching, throat pain, and lung problems over time. In this place, not every prisoner is able to survive the conditions. Mr. Dong Chen was a Christian from Fuxin City in Liaoning Province. Because of his affiliation with an underground church, he was sentenced to two years of re-education through labor. As told by his fellow prisoners, in December of 2007, he became severely ill with high blood pressure and was sent home to be hospitalized. But after a week, his family could no longer afford medical treatment, so Dong was taken back to Masanja labor camp and resumed his heavy workload. On the afternoon of May 25, 2008, he vomited and lost consciousness. Prison guards ignored him for several hours until he died at around 9 p.m. He was 56 years old. Labor camp officials later told Dong's family that he had died from natural causes. This is just one of many examples of life and death within China's labor camps. Other such camps are scattered throughout the country. Although it's impossible to get an accurate official count of how many prisoners are being held in these camps, human rights groups estimate it's in the tens of thousands or more. It's disgusting, isn't it? To think of a government that is saying if you're a Christian, and if you're not part of a government-approved church, you need to be re-educated, and we're going to use you as slave labor. And I can't say, I don't know, it, it might have been a regular, reputable, 
printing company in China or something like that. But then again, it could have been in slave labor. Now, wouldn't that be ironic? Wouldn't that be strange if it was house church Christians that are being imprisoned over there and used as slave labor? Wouldn't that be weird if they were the ones that put this thing together? You talk about the, the cruel irony of that. Here they are, they're over there imprisoned for their faith, and they're printing up false Bible versions. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was a regular printer. Maybe it was somebody that's not using slave labor. But one thing I can guarantee you is they got them made cheap. Now see, the NIV people, watch my uh, NIV money-making scam, I think it's called, you know, watch that video and you'll see that they talk about demographics and, and we got we to gotta get this group of people here and we got to make one for the African Americans and one for the Latin Americans and, the, and we got to, ooh, you know, there's money to, be, money to be made out there. You know, that's what they do time and time again. This is about money. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what this new NIV is about. That's why they keep coming out with them over and over and over and over again. You got to just keep on buying the newest NIV. And what, you know, the old NIVs and now the TNIV are both, oh, we don't even sell those anymore. Those are now, you know, relegated to, well, we don't really recommend those. You got to have the newest one. And, and what do they do? They don't go to America and find a publisher in America where people need jobs, where there's unemployment just skyrocketing right now. They don't come to America to get the newest NIV printed. They go to communist China. They go to the enemies of Jesus Christ to print their Bible. How much more do you people need to see to wake up to this scam? This is a scam. These are not God's people that are putting this garbage out. It just makes me so sick. Going to communists, atheists, to print their new version so that they can make money off of you. If you, if you are an NIV user, how much more of this are you going to put up with? Are you okay with this? And, you know, some, some hypocrites are going to come along and say, well, you know, there are King James Bibles that are made, you know, in China too. I've seen those printed in China. Yeah, there's no copyright on the King James Bible. Anybody can print the King James Bible. Okay? We're not talking about that. We're talking about a company that owns the sole rights to this thing going to China to have their new version made. Where are you going to spend your money? Where, who are you going to give your money to? Okay, this, giving your money to somebody like this, I bought it because I'm a researcher. That's what I do. Okay, I have a lot of stupid books here I don't even read just because I needed a couple quotes out of them for videos or documentation. Okay, that's what I do. But would I buy this normally? No. There's no way I'd pay any money for this kind of junk. All right, if I wanted a Bible, I would go to an American publisher or maybe to one, a British type of a publisher or something like that. I wouldn't go to communists to buy a Bible. It's, it's, it is just disgusting to me to think that this new NIV is produced by communists. Oh, man. So that's going to be it for now. Again, thank you for watching. You better get to the King James Bible. I'll tell you what. Don't fall for this made-in-China new version junk. That's it.